have reached the Josephine County Sheriff's Office. Due to limited staffing, we are unable to answer your call. Transferring to an attendant. One moment, please. Your call cannot be completed at this time. Please try again later. Goodbye. Josephine County is a rural area in southwestern Oregon with a population of around 80,000 people. A lot of people are struggling in this area uh, because of the lack of employment. I think the most common crimes that we're seeing are burglaries, burglaries and thefts. Due to a massive budget shortfall, Josephine County has had to reduce its public safety expenditures from $20 million last year to less than $9 million this year. About a year ago we, had, we were up to 98 personnel and we're now at 39. We now have three patrol officers to cover 1,642 square miles. Uh, we only work one eight-hour shift five days a week. In May of 2012, cuts to the county jail staff led to the release of 39 inmates, including people charged with robbery, assault, and rape. When they left here, they were laughing and joking and having a good time, and they went right back to what they do best, and that's, you know, create victims. Basically, we only respond to life-threatening calls. Property crimes, uh, we don't do any follow-up. We just don't have the personnel to do it. We're seeing a lot more victims. People are getting more and more angry. Uh, some people are taking law into their own hands, which uh, obviously scares the heck out of me. They will not send an officer out. So we are on our own totally. For self-protection, I carry a Glock. 9 millimeter semi-automatic. Sam Nichols co-founded Citizens Against Crime in the summer of 2012. We had our first, very first meeting the first part of August and uh, at the neighborhood fire station and in the small town of O'Brien we had 100 people show up to our very first meeting. That's amazing. Since then, Nichols and a group of around 20 armed volunteers have been conducting routine patrols in and around O'Brien, Oregon. The blinking light that's on top of the car is always on whether we're out in the daytime or night, so that it identifies us. Because we do drive slowly. This is a problem house right here, if you call it that. For the most part, the patrols are boring, and we hope to keep them that way uh, by being out there enough that uh, the people don't try to do something. The criminal is going to pick on the vulnerable, you know, uh, the sheep. Uh, and if he sees a weak area, that's where he's going to penetrate. My biggest tool when we go out is a notebook and a pen and a cell phone and my eyes. The gun is secondary or tertiary or even further down the, low, the list than that. We don't want something to happen that happened in Florida. In, in the case where uh, Zimmerman shot the, the boy. Our patrols are always a minimum of two people. In six months of patrolling, we have not had a reported theft in our area. That says something for our patrol. What Sam is doing is, it's admirable in, in one sense, and I just hope that they, they don't make a mistake. Uh, you know, I admire him for stepping up to the plate. Former Deputy Sheriff Carol Dixon is another Josephine County resident who is stepping up to the plate. I was talking to one of my law enforcement friends and I was joking and I said, we need to start a Facebook page that we can post when things are stolen or when somebody's house is burglarized. Dixon started a Facebook page called To Catch a Thief in July of 2012. Today, the site has more than 1,600 followers. It's like a virtual neighborhood watch. It's all public information. It's just a central clearinghouse where people in this valley can go and look and see what's going on in their neighborhood and be more aware so that they're not the next victim. So law enforcement can use this site too, and they have here. Unlike so many other cash-strapped counties in the U.S., Josephine County's financial problems stem from a long and complicated relationship with the federal government. The problem that I think is unique to our county is a lot of the land in our county is owned by the federal government. No taxes are generated by that. In 1916, the federal government purchased nearly three million acres of land in Oregon that had been owned by the railroads. 
As a result, 18 counties in Oregon lost a significant source of property tax revenue. To make up for the loss of property taxes, Congress eventually passed something called the ONC Act of 1937. The federal government says, okay, we will give you 50% of the timber revenues. Well, over the years, that worked until the environmentalists stopped the logging and we no longer got that. In the 1990s, Congress authorized temporary subsidies to compensate counties for the lost timber revenue. Over the last four years was the drawdown. Last year we got our last check. Uh, so now the federal government controls our land. We can't use for any resources. And they've turned their back on us and walked away. Kind of a typical federal methodology. We are going to need to be out there for at least the next five years, in my opinion. People need to band together now more so than ever to protect each other because law enforcement here in this community is, is weak at best. Maybe we've become too dependent on the government for everything. We outnumber the people that are causing these crimes by at least 98, 99 to one or two. If we stand shoulder to shoulder, we can take back our community and we have done that.